She went after four different billionaires. That's right, including former Goldman Sachs CEO Lloyd Blankfein, who responded on Twitter earlier today. Yeah, look, it's the latest salvo. I mean, this is going to be a war, as clearly as we see between Warren and many business leaders, some of them on Wall Street, some of them not. Uh, and it just seems to me every time she puts out an ad, puts out a tweet, many of them feel like they have to respond. There are others on Wall Street in particular who are trying to say to these, these guys, look, don't go there because you're playing right into her hands. But clearly they're not so you know, disturbed by what she's saying and they're going to keep responding in kind as we saw today. Brian Gardner, you say that you think the ad is effective. Um, she has come out and said explicitly uh, business should not be afraid of a Warren presidency. Do you believe that? No, I don't believe that. I mean, I, what, what, I, what I sent you guys was that I think it's effective as a political tool. Right. On the substance, I think it's deceptive and disingenuous. Um, but as political, as a political ad, it's very effective because it really gins up the base. She's fighting with Bernie Sanders for the, the, the heart and soul of the left wing of the Democratic Party. They're splitting that vote. And this really energizes that base and, and rallies it around. And where, where does the disingenuous come in specifically? I, I don't think she tells the, the full story of, uh, of what it means to pay your fair share. I mean, the, it, it's part of the narrative is that they're not paying their fair share. And I would argue um, that she's not presenting the facts as they are. Um, for 2017, uh, on, at, on an uh, income, uh, the top 1% uh, accounted for about 19% of all income, and they paid over 35%, I believe, of all income taxes. And if you expand that out to the top 5%, they account for about 35% of income, and they pay almost two, uh, uh, three fifths of all income taxes. So the, I would argue that when you look at the data, and Professor Warren is a Harvard Law School professor who believes in data, when you look at the data, the data says, the rich are doing more than paying their fair share. And that's just income. Yeah. That's, not, that's not real estate taxes. That's, that's only at the federal level. It's not what they're paying on their, the, on their real estate holdings at the state and local level. So I, she, she is being disingenuous in making this argument about uh, certain segments of, of the population not paying their fair share. She never defines what the fair share yeah. is. Well, the, what's interesting here to me, other Brian, in part, <laughs> is, is how this episode... Right. Uh, ties together the idea that all politics in this country right now are very tribal. Yep. They are very us versus them. And it can be the so-called deplorables versus the elites, mm -hmm. as it was in, 19, uh, in 2016. Right. Uh, and this time it can be the billionaires versus the people. It's all trying to drive uh, sort of interest group wedges into the electorate. Yeah, and, and for Elizabeth Warren, she's trying to win a primary. You know, we're not at the point, at least from her perspective yet, to try to win a general election against Trump. She wants to try to, you know, get to that base voter, she, and she thinks this is working for her right now. You know, and the other side of it, too, for the Wall Street guys, the business executives, yeah, on the one hand, they're probably concerned that their taxes may go up if she became president. But there's, I think there's the other piece of this, which is, you know, other administrations have been business friendly. Look at President Trump. Even look at President Obama. You know, he did stuff with Dodd-Frank and everything else. But he, he was close at moments to Lloyd Blankfein, who was the CEO of Goldman Sachs at the time. You fast forward possibly to her becoming president, they may not be that happy if she got in there because they may lose some sort of access. They will not be as close to this administration if she keeps going down this road of, of vilifying these guys. Uh, Brian Gardner, I think I ask every political strategist uh, on the topic of Elizabeth Warren, if she does win the primary uh, and she becomes the Democratic nominee, does she pivot? Does she become more moderate? It, it, that's a tough one for her because... One of the attract, attractive qualities of her is that she comes off as authentic. Once you pivot, you lose the authenticity. So um, as a practical matter, she needs to pivot back to the center because I, I think on cultural and economic issues, the president would, would beat her. Um, so she has to, uh, one, attract to suburban uh, voters who are, I think, turned off by this message and, and also African-American voters who I think she is struggling with. How she does that pivot and look authentic at the same time, that's not an easy, that's not an easy accomplishment for her. So I, I think she's got her work cut out for her. And doubling down on this message, it, it, in the short term, it's fine. Longer term, I think she could come to regret it.
Yeah, I, I think, too, she's put all of these things, all these plans, right, out in writing. She's coming out with ads against, you know, billionaires and making it very clear where she stands. It's going to be very difficult for her, if she does win the nomination, to go back on all of this. She's made it so clear, not hedging anything. You can take what you want from that. But she has been right, very, very clear as to what she wants to be as a candidate and possibly the, the, the next president if she could go on to be President Trump. Who knows?